Hello, my name's Kate, this is Tom. He's going to be playing a Viking. I've just been working on a Viking Saxon drama for the last six months. So uh, you can see Tom's given us a beard, but it's not, not long enough. Uh, and we're using yak hair, as you can see here. It comes in different colors. And what you do, you mix it. You have to mix your colors together because if you look at beards, you can see here, there's reds, there's blondes, there's darks. So this is, I've mixed this up because I think this is probably about Tom's color. And the way you mix it, if you don't have a hackle, is you just put the two colours together. I don't know if you can see the colour difference there. And you just keep, you just keep, you twiddle it with your hands and you just keep separating it through until you get a good colour mix. And apart from that, he will have scars, he will have a wig on, we're shaving the sides and we're putting tattoos on. So let's get started with the beard. So obviously the short stuff is his. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him a long beard here that's going to be plaited and held in. So um, I, can't, I, I debated whether to go get Tom to shave and go into naked skin, but in some respects it's easier to lay on when you've got a beard because the prosade will grip the hair and then the hair will grip to that. And in some respects it's harder because the hair, it gets a bit messier. So it was a, a double-edged sword, but I thought it might be a bit different to show someone with a small beard. And the reality of the job is that's sometimes what you get. So it's good to know what you can do. And quite often, um, certainly in TV, you don't have time to lay a full beard on. So you're putting a stuck-on beard or you're putting a bit of a beard on. But laying over the top of that is a really useful phenomenon. And, and, and you, we need to do it more and more and more because beards are one of the hardest things, I think, ever to do it successfully in television or, or film. Because this part of the actor's mouth if Tom opens his mouth to speak, if, you, if you're on lace, that is going to want to ping out all the time. So you're going to be putting glue on, the actor's going to feel like he can't open his mouth, and that's, that's never good. So this may take you longer in the morning, but it gives your actor complete freedom, um, and they won't feel constrained, and your check time will be much lower. Okay, this is, I, I mean, I, for years I used, people use spirit gum, but I'm using thickened prosade, and the reason why I use thickened prosade it's because A, it's got less shine because it's got a bit of cabosol in, but B, it's actually easier to, to apply because it's quite dull. Um, even on naked skin, you can put this on and it will dry. You know, don't go mad with it, less is more. When we have a sticky edge, and we were filming in, we were doing battle scenes in Budapest big time, so you go in with a bit of matte powder if you have a problem. But on the whole, as long as you're reasonably careful with it, it's fine, absolutely fine. This is a prime example. This wig is not fitted for Tom. And as you can see, it's just a toupee. But what we're going to do is we're going to cheat that on and then we're going to add, thread this in at the back so that he gets like a long hair. So it's all about cheating. Our job is all about cheating. So this is not made to fit Tom. This is not, um, this is just a little piece we've got at the back. But what we'll do is a ponytail and have some of it bound with leather. Yeah. So Vicky at the moment has just shaved the sides of his hair and we've then uh, gaff quatted, yep. flattened his hair, then we're going to stick this toupee down and then we're going to lose this piece. And you can see it's slightly the wrong colour, but we'll make it work. The, the, this will set over yeah. the top. So, um, and one of the things uh, we have been using that I really like, and we've just got it into the shop, is um, this new Talisa spirit gum, which is incredibly strong. Um, I know everyone has their own spirit gums and I've always used all of um, the Joe Blasco, um, the KD151, but this one's got a bit of shine to it, but if you really, 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 really tap it out and then you go on top with a damp leather or a damp bit of cloth, it absolutely loses it. This was a sponge they gave me in Budapest, Vicky, that the, the Italians use. What, to damp it out? So they just, when, what out. they do, they paint it on and yeah. then they just dab, 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 dab this till there's literally nothing left. Yeah. Then they get a really wet bit of silk or leather yeah. and they, they just iron it in. I, I can't tell you how good it is. So I've got a little bit of leather there. So we just need to wet that down. Yeah. Try it because I think you'll love it. So now this looks a bit ridiculous because it looks very, very over the top and too big. So what we're going to do is comb it through and tong it. And this is where you need to make sure that your actor stays very still and that if you're in a makeup truck, that you have someone outside the door making sure that an AD doesn't come in. 
something doesn't barge in because these get very, very hot. They're in an oven. You can see how fine they are. They're made in Italy. And you can just, what you need to do, you're just putting a little bend in the beard. It's a crinkle. Um, but you need your actor to, your actor will feel the heat of your tongue on your skin. So if somebody comes in or knocks you, then um, it's not going to work. So I'm going to put that back in there. I'm going to just start combing through gently. Now you're, you're, you're going to lose a lot of your beard, but that's what you want to do. And particularly, it's quite hard on the moustache. You want to get a bend near the root so it's coming out. Here, we just need to lose some of this bulk. You can see it's coming out. But I'm being quite tough with it. I want to pull some of it out. I think These are very good. Like, you know, actors um, are not the best at sitting still, as we all know. But they, they feel the heat of this near their skin, and they don't move, because you would feel this if it hit you. I'd burn actors' ears with this, and you would bloody well feel it. Yeah, they, they don't move, they're terrified. <laughs> Tom's not moving anyway, are you? <laughs> so I'm going to shortly go in with scissors and just start lopping away because um, this is way too hairy. Um, Your eyes shut, Tom. It's a bit of alcohol, but not the drinking kind. Big for the face, but I'm sure it looks fab if it goes on. I've got the tattoo pen there as well, Vicky, if we need to. Right. Perfect. So I'm still, I'm just letting the beard sort of bake. You can see that's basically there. Vicky's just put an amazing Viking tattoo on because part is a bit. If part of the thing was to scare your opponent, and they did look pretty scary. So Tom, if you just close your eyes for me. And I'm going to use your lap as well, if I may. Yeah, do you want to hold it? Please. So this is, this is a Le Maquillage palette, and it's called Dirt, Grime and Guy Liner. Um, and you can see the colours have been chosen by a makeup artist called Cheryl Mitchell. Um, and it's about dirtying down and giving guy liner to, to actors. So just close for me. So here we go. Now this has got to be done really roughly. You really almost want to do this with your finger. And they would do this with soot, so. But once we start flicking some dirt on. So Vicky's gonna put a scar on. Um, now these scars, this is designed to go around the eye. These are pro bondo scars, and the, the molds are silicon. So um, the good thing about these scars is that you can see exactly, if you, know, if you notice if you hold it up to the light, you can see your scar and they're refillable, they're pretty indestructible. There's only silicon, the only thing that's gonna ruin them is, is cutting them. So Vicky will be able to see exactly where she wants to place that scar. And she's just gonna put some um, Prosade on, just so the skin's ready for it. It's so. always such a pressure. Now, to, again, it, it's all part of an act, but I'm going to flat this, this moustache and beard in um, into two pla to a forked beard, because I think it looks, it looks more scary in a way when you do that. Um, but you know what? Most, most directors now, it seems, want a bit of a modern interpretation. Who really knows what the Vikings look like? There's no... We know that they had filed teeth, so you have free reign almost to kind of, you know... There was pra a practical nature of it would be that if they were fighting, they would want their hair out of the way. Yeah. They would want to look fierce, and this kind of did look fierce. And yeah. we filmed in Copenhagen, and the Viking guy there, the expert, said to us that, from what he can understand, they would shave right up the back of their heads and leave the front, so they looked really weird and bizarre. Good job they didn't quite go for that look for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put the um, Pro Bondo scar on, and now she's just colouring it. Um, again, when I was filming on the Viking show, not the Viking show, The Last Kingdom, 
Um, we had to seal our scars because there was so much dirt and grime and blood around. And because Pro Bondo, it will always stay a bit tacky. Um, but obviously here we don't need to. So we're just re-emphasizing. Now, Shauna over there is the one who created these scars and she's a genius with things like this. And you can see there is no edge on it at all. It's absolutely brilliant. The only thing you do get is shine. So you need to have a good anti-shine. So I'm going to use as well also, these are the glazing gels, which are from PPI that we sell. And these are fantastic way to do bruising. They're very intense, but they work so well. So they're very sheer, but they've got a lot of pigment in. Shall I do it round his, I'm going to do a little bit of a bruise just around Tom's nose here. So this first color that I'm using is the black and blue one. This little contraption here, which comes from the States, is a simple little thing, and it's just to put dirt on. It's like an old-fashioned perfume at atomizer. So basically, you fill up whatever dirt you like, and you just puff, and you get a nice little, it's a quick way of putting on dirt. So I'm just gonna put some in the hair. It's great for hair. It just, Google's modern hair is washed, and it's shampooed, and it's got shine, and there would have been none of that. So it's quite good just to, obviously, be careful of where your glues are but just to lay that on, just to give that a bit of... And you know, I think dirtying down is one of the hardest things you can do. So if you can use different things, if you can do some flicking, you can do, we're gonna flick some blood on in a minute. If your blood won't flick, you can always just use your fingers and flick, or you can thin it down with water. I found I did a lot of finger flicking. I'm just going to carry on my flicking down here. And again, you work in tandem with Costume. Costume would put a big blood splatter over here as well. So this is where he killed someone. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's like a quiff at the front. Yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> That help you feel like you could kill someone. That's yeah. where you axed someone. 